These are the case files of the Dust Bowl Detective Agency. Episode 3. The Construction of a Crime. Small Town, USA. Population. Crime. A small child pokes a stick into an ant nest. Soon the ants retaliate and cover the child's arms with bites. The child runs inside and into the safety of his mother's arms. But there is one thing the child cannot run from. Crime. The bites of crime have found a new victim to attack. The innocent citizens of a nondescript small town. No longer will the miscreants of crime be satisfied with building their criminal nest, but will now delve into the construction of the most diabolical crime of them all. Murder. The soft morning breeze slides in through the window, like a cat burglar with nine lives. I pace the floor in my office. Jimmy is late, like a bad penny. He is waiting to turn up. I'm sorry, sir. The cows want to give up their milk until the third act of Macbeth. Of course, of course. Now, Jimmy, I need some help from you. Read this article and give me your best sleuth impressions. Drama in Midtown. An unplanned construction project took the life of Sally Forth, 33 years old, on Friday. An errant brick hit Sally Forth as she walked out of Castle's department store. Police were dispatched to the scene and she was declared non-living. Despite several eyewitnesses swearing that it was a brick that hit the poor woman, no brick could be found. The roof is being inspected today by Charles Straw, the local mason, to see if the wind might have blown an errant brick off the building and onto the head of Sally Forth. Police are waiting to release their findings until after the inspection has taken place. A very sad event, sir. Yes, yes. Now here is an article from last month. Old man dies while walking. An unpredictable disaster takes the life of Henry Rushing, age 57, as he hurried down a country lane while taking his morning constitutional. He was struck in the head by a blunt object. Henry was found in the afternoon when the parson's wife came upon him while going into town to fulfill a hankering for ham. Parson's wife, Miss Henrietta, suffered a discombobulation and collapsed on the road. When she awoke, she headed into town and straight to the police station. Police declared the cause of death unknown. No hard objects were found near the body, and Mr. Rushing is not known to have any enemies despite his forward tendencies. Very tragic events, sir. Did you know either of them? No, Jimmy. But is there nothing there that strikes you as unusual? I wonder where Miss Henrietta gets her ham. I didn't know we had a good ham place. No, about the crimes. Crimes, sir? Yes, think about the connection between the two events. Hmm. Was Miss Forth going to get ham? Well, it was a blunt object that killed both of them. Yes, Jimmy, now you are using that detective brain of yours. What else? Um, well, there was no object found at either crime scene, despite people saying they saw a brick hit Miss Forth. Now we are at the crux, Jimmy. If someone dropped or threw a brick on Miss Forth, why would they risk retrieving it? Retrieving it, sir? Yes. In both cases, the object had been removed. You don't mean... these cases are connected? Exactly, Jimmy. Something nefarious is running around our town, dropping bricks on people, like a knight defending a medieval castle. Couldn't these have been coincidences, sir? The missing brick, Jimmy. The missing brick. That is the key to our murderer. Why remove the brick? Well, perhaps it was picked up by someone who didn't know it was part of the crime scene. I once saw a brick bounce across the whole yard. Possible, but unlikely. I've seen it happen all the time when I'm by myself. I didn't mean your brick, Jimmy. I'm sure it always bounces across the yard when you are by yourself. I mean, in this case, it is highly improbable. Someone took that brick on purpose. Our killer is a cold-blooded lot to commit a murder and then slip the brick into their pocket when everyone is gathered around. Like a rock-collecting lizard. Are we sure there is a crime here, sir? There isn't much to go on. Yet. Does the paper say what time the memorial for Miss Forth begins? In just a few hours, sir. Then we will make our stop there and begin our investigation. Time 
time for psychological profile, Jimmy. Well, that does sound fun. Get your notepad at the ready. Yes, sir. Right. Criminal. Unknown. At the top. Now right. Has bricks. And under that right. Retrieves bricks after crime. Now make a conclusions line. And right. None. I think it's a good start, sir. Sir, there are a lot of cars here. Perhaps I am not as clever as I thought. It seems as if every agency has gotten wind of the possible brick serial killer. But our metal must shine through. Sir, look how long that line is. Yes, all the agencies must be here investigating. FBI. Alcohol tax unit. Department of Justice, Treasury Department. Golly, you wouldn't think these people are agents. They want to keep a low profile. They don't want anyone getting spooked, especially the criminal. Very smart. Jimmy, have your notepad ready. Like a watch with only the minute hand. Time is short. Oh, that brick really walloped her good. You're right, Jimmy. It should have been a closed casket. Mr. Forth, my name is Clarence, and this here is Jimmy. Hiya! We are investigating what happened to... What's that name again, Jimmy? Sally Forth. Yes, Sally. We are investigating the incident. Uh, oh my. Well, thank you for looking into it, but I've already told the police all I know. Just a few minutes of your time, Mr. Forth. Did Sally have any enemies? What? Uh, no, but this doesn't seem appropriate right now. Had she ever mentioned bricks being thrown at her? I, I don't even know what that means. Why are you doing this? That sounds like a no, Jimmy. Has she ever shown interest in bricks and how they are made? How could you ask me a question like that? Mr. Birdseye means before she was killed. Afterwards doesn't make sense if you think about it logically. I don't understand. What is it you two want? Justice, Mr. Forth, is what we seek. Did you happen to notice what kind of bricks this building is made out of? I don't know anything about bricks. I don't know why you are here. What if I wanted some high-quality bricks? Where would you suggest I go to get them? I don't know. You should probably go see the mason. Why isn't there more respect for my dead wife? Well, at least everyone dressed up, Mr. Forth. I think they meant well. May I compare this brick to the head wound? This often happens when so many agencies are involved. Some of them just don't know how to talk to people. Would you like us to tell them all to leave, Mr. Forth? Then they wouldn't be bothering you. I cannot take any more of this. Please leave. I want to grieve for my dead wife. Of course, Mr. Forth. I place my business card in his suit pocket next to his corsage. Jimmy gives the rest of the agents a nasty look for messing things up for us. He got real riled up. The agencies going after us are going to have a tough time getting answers from him. Why don't they realize how upset they are making them? This often happens with the big detective agencies, Jimmy. They just don't know how to talk to people. Or they don't care to learn. Let's be sure to sign the guest book on our way out. Where are we going next, sir? Ah, uh, Jimmy. 
You have to pay attention. We were given our first solid clue from Mr. Forth. We are headed for the brickyard to talk with the local mason. Not only was he inspecting the roof today, he may also give us some leads on people who have bricks that they might want to retrieve. But we have to be careful. Someone knows too much about bricks, and the mason is a prime suspect. Hmm. I have a gun in my ankle holster and my shoulder holster, sir. Then we could shoot them low and high. We are here to see the local mason. That is me, sir. How may I be of service to you? Were you the one who investigated the roof after Mrs. Forrest's death? Yes, that was me. Of course. I needed help getting up to the roof. My legs don't climb stairs quite as well as they used to. Did you come to any conclusions? Well, I spoke with the police, but I'm not sure who the two of you are. I produced my badge with a flourish. An action which Jimmy copies. We are detectives investigating the case. What is your name, sir? Oh, yes, I see. Charles. Charles Straw. I have been the local mason for about 30 years. The roof, sir. Do you have any findings? Oh, yes, the roof. Well, no, I mean nothing that looked dangerous. There was some disrepair, but all of it looked old, and even then it would not have fallen off the edge of the building. And how did you manage to get to the roof? You had mentioned that it wasn't easy for you. Well, my new assistant helped me. Very good. I always have such trouble finding good help. Before Jimmy came along, I went through three assistants in two months. May they rest in peace. Yes, I've been quite lucky. Bob is a young man, but knows his stuff quite well. He already knows enough that he could take over from me if I decide to retire soon. You are a lucky man, Mr. Straw. But surely he doesn't know that much already. I tell you, he does. He has me most impressed. What type of bricks does he know about? Skintled? Yes. Sandlime? Yes. Fly ash? Yes. Engineering bricks? Yes. Concrete bricks? Yes, even concrete. He knows them all, and he makes his own special blend. But he won't give away his secret. I don't want him to. Every mason has a secret brick they craft only for themselves. Well, you surely are a fortunate man, Mr. Straw. Would it be possible for us to meet the young man? Bob was his name? I am afraid he is gone at the moment. He asked for the day off after we checked out the roof, and I felt he had more than earned it. Oh, of course. Well, nothing to be done, then. I place my business card in Charles' hand, and we say our farewells. Jimmy, did you notice which building he looked toward when he mentioned Bob being away? Yes, sir. It was the bungalow on the left. I think it's a place for a worker to live. The other building looks like where they manufacture bricks. We need to get in there. I hope you don't have any plans for tonight. Jimmy and I readied ourselves with our dark clothing and lockpicks. Jimmy gave up one of his gun holsters for increased mobility. Though he hasn't told me which one. Sir, is it right that we are burgling? I don't like it any more than you do, Jimmy. But sometimes the call of justice is higher, and some rules have to be bent. Yes, sir. I hope it's right. Good lad. You just follow me, and everything will work out all right. Here, lad. It's time to work on your lockpicking skills. Lad, that was grand. There was no lock, sir. I just pushed on the door. Well, good thinking. 
Thank you, sir. Let's see here. Sir? Steal yourself, Jimmy. Why are all the bricks arranged like people? They are playing cards and eating dinner. A and if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Birdseye, those over there are on a romantic stroll. Jimmy, I believe we have found our perp. A brick comes crashing through the window, and like trying to put a hat on in the dark, it narrowly misses my head. Oh, wrong holster. He's on the run. Give chase, Jimmy. Left or right, Jimmy? Which way did he go? Throwing bricks is more likely to be a crime of a left-handed person, sir. So it's the left door. Oh no, sir. It's definitely right. You were right, Jimmy. Dead right. Hello, hello, hello! What did we have here? A couple of troublemakers, is it? Sir, Jimmy and I here are detectives. I would caution you. Not to point that gun at us. A couple of detectives? Now you Americans are going to have to do better than that. I ran the Bobbies all over the place. Bob is my name. Bobcat Bob, on account of always smelling like a bobcat. That doesn't make a lot of sense, Bob. Do they even have bobcats where you come from? Never mind, does it? I caught a couple of Bobbies and it's in the pen for use. Easy, Jimmy. Just go along with him for now. I think he wants us to climb into this hole. We was just doing some repairs on the factory. This'll give you a chance to become permanent residents here. Do you see this, sir? He's amazing. All this mortar is going to be perfect thickness. I believe you, Jimmy. We are going to be encased in a real nice tomb. Now I'm going to sit here for an hour to make sure that morning's hardens. Then you try anything, I'm going to cut me a few bobbies. We understood the first part, but then you said... Stay still in there and don't try any mischief. Yes, yes, we got that part. Because if it does... I'm going to curl your heels with this heater! You lost us again, sir. Stay stills in there, I come in to kill ya! Got it. Right. Shaving is history! The face scraper is the only way to shave since the Treaty of Versailles ended the cruelty of war. Don't go back. Your face deserves better than the soft touch of a straight razor. Support the brave men of our armed forces by using the face scraper today. And by... Column Building and Sons. Need a column built, but don't need it to support anything? Column Building and Sons will ship it right out to you. Have you ever had those nice columns that have roofs over them? Those are the other guys. We build columns that just stand there, doing nothing, like a dame looking for a date. Don't let her pass you by, fellas. Column Building and Sons. Sir, I'm scared. If we wait for the mortar to harden, then we will be trapped. If we try to get out before Bob leaves, they only just shoot us. This might be our end, Jimmy. All my life I have chased justice. At our end, we are forced to stand still. Have you ever faced death like this before, sir? Yes, I have, Jimmy. Once. 
I was born in a small town, not unlike this one, where I grew up under the demanding tutelage of a baker who also happened to be my father. I have no good memories of him. He never told me he was proud of me. If my bread was bad, he would shriek and tear them to pieces. When they were admirable, he would say nothing and put them out for sale. I had no other friends, just my bread. Every day I would create them only to have them torn to pieces or sold off to be eaten. I didn't mind the eating. That was in fact what they were made for. It was the parting of ways that rent my heart. I joined the war as soon as I could to get away from my father. They shipped me overseas to France with a rifle and barely any training. Soon my fellow soldiers noticed I wouldn't eat any of the bread that was given to us. When they inquired, I divulged that I had been a baker's apprentice and that it was like torture for me to eat badly made bread. Soon they began to smuggle ingredients to me. I'm not proud of it, Jimmy, but war changes a man. I began to make counterfeit bread. Only mine was much better than anything the Army Corps could supply us with. Soon my bread was the worst kept secret in all of France. One of the officers came to me and blackmailed me, threatening to expose my illicit bread trade if I didn't begin to supply only to him and his fellow officers. But I wasn't cowed by him. Like a good doe, I rose to the occasion. I turned myself into the quartermaster who jailed me for several weeks. Then they came for me. Special assignment. If I completed it, the quartermaster would let me go free. They needed a group of spies to enter German territory and assassinate Erich von Falkenhayn, who was a German high commander, Oberster Harris Leiter. The commander was holding a party in Paris, and the spies thought a cook would help them penetrate the defenses. At this point, I tried to tell them the difference between a cook and a baker, but they seemed disinterested. And with my criminal record, I certainly do not blame them. We traveled for weeks behind enemy lines disguised as a cooking detail, until we reached Paris on the night before the party. I managed to insert myself into the kitchen by pretending to be a deaf mute. Once the chef tasted my bread, I was left alone to do my work. The night of the party, the rest of the spies failed to make it in, and I alone was in charge of the assassination. I baked my bread as usual, but I baked a special loaf that I incorporated cyanide capsules into. Using hand gestures, I managed to indicate that I had created my masterpiece, and that this was only for the high commander. The chef had me take it to him personally. My hands were trembling as I straightened my cook's garb and hid the bread on the solid gold plate with a gold lid. Someone must have informed the commander that something special was on its way, because everyone was seated quietly but excitedly around the table. For a minute I forgot why I was there. I brandished the gold platter around the room, lifting the lid slightly for different guests, and then slamming it back down, shouting, Nine! 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 The crowd was raucous as I pranced back and forth in the dining room. I soon pretended to dance with the platter, and then I covered it with kisses as the laughter and hooting got louder and louder. I placed a gold platter in front of Falkenheim. I caught the eye of a Froelein as I did so. The ancient law of death by beauty came for me. The kissy faces I was making at her seemed to enrage the high commander. She was sitting next to him, so maybe he knew her. He flung the platter away and shouted a command. The soldiers rushed in to grab me. They dragged me away. In an hour, I was in an interrogation room with one officer after another coming in to shout at me. I kept my cover as a deaf mute, but soon their interrogation became physical. I lost my cool. I made rude gestures at them, and soon they had enough of me. I was chained to a chair in the corner of the interrogation room. Like a platoon without water, I knew I was in trouble. I had figured out enough of their German to know they were going to ship me out as a prisoner of war. I waited in the dark of the room. I don't know how long I waited. Finally someone entered. He was not an officer, but a lowly grunt. Essen was all he said to me as he flipped on the light. The light made tears run down my cheeks. As my eyes first burned and became accustomed to it, 
The soldier had a crude plate with some food on it. Bread. He pushed the first of it into my mouth. He hadn't let it cool enough. It slightly burned my tongue, but the taste burned me to my soul. The integrity of the bread was highly suspect, and the butter distribution was all wrong. I thrashed in the chair like an animal, and dug my fingernails into the wood of my chair, as I was fed bite after bite of subpar bread. An otherwise passable butter had been carelessly spread. Too much at the beginning. Not enough at the end. I was going mad. Stop. They had finally broken no me. No more. Stop. The soldier ran out of the room, and I knew I was a dead man. You see, Jimmy, I have faced death before. Nothing will ever be as terrible as being in that torture room, being forced to eat bread. What's that noise? Oh, I tried to tell you, sir, but you were busy telling your story. I'm going to try and use my brick chisel and hammer to get us out of here. Where did you get those, Jimmy? I always have them, although I wish I didn't have just my back up here. They don't work quite as well. The first brick is loose, sir. Well done, Jimmy. Keep going. Yes, sir. By early that morning, we had made it out of our enclosure and back to the Dust Bowl. We had spent extra time so Jimmy could replace the bricks that he had knocked out in our escape. If he gets a close look at those bricks, he'll know it's someone else's work. It will have to do, Jimmy. Besides, what other choice do we have? This just means we have limited time to set our trap. A trap? Yes, Jimmy. What is the one thing a person obsessed with bricks... Cannot resist. Mm. Do you mean bricks, sir? Exactly. Write this down and take it down to the newspaper before they roll off the presses. Found! A brick from the Byzantine era! Wanting to return to owner! Please inquire at the Dust Bowl Detective Agency! Come with knowledge of Byzantine bricks as proof of ownership! Sir, that's genius! But if he reads we are a detective agency, he'll be awfully suspicious. He can't resist, Jimmy. Remember our psychological profile? The trap is foolproof for this individual. Jimmy leaves and then returns shortly. And like spreading cat urine to disguise our scent, our trap is set. Okay, lad. Put both gun holsters on again. We are going to need them. We both apply a fake mustache, and Jimmy opts for sideburns as well. Then we wait, while fermenting in the hot upstairs room, like a sourdough culture. Wake up, sir. Huh? What? It's Bobcat Bob! Sure enough, Bobcat was eyeing the front of our detective agency from across the street. He moved back and forth taking turns, looking around, and then circling in place. I thought I could detect trembling as he dreamt of Byzantine clay. Then he pounced across the street and to the door of the detective agency. Go answer the scratches, Jimmy. But play it cool. These disguises will protect us. Sir, you must be here for the mustache. I mean, Byzantine brick. Aye! I lost one recently. I saw your ad. I was popping off here. You are here for the brick? Yes. I see the ads in the rags, and I come right over here. We have a brick? I was telling yous. I was here for the brick. Oh, oh. Well, right this way, sir. I try to make myself look busy by reading a law book, but I hold a quizzical look on my face, like I'm not understanding it very well. 
Mr. Bird's Eye. This man is here because of the ad. Oh, good. A fellow brick enthusiast for you, Jimmy. Perhaps you two share a Hebrew heritage. Now, sir, may I have your name? Your name's Bob. Yes, Bob. Now, we can't just give this brick out to anyone. We have to make sure this really is your brick. I would do the same. Good, good. So Jimmy here will have to quiz you before we hand over the brick. I is ready for anything you can give me. That's the spirit. Now, Sir Bob, about what temperature would a Byzantine brick be fired? 900 Celsius, but I have done them at 875 Celsius. They hold their structure better. Very impressive, Mr. Bob. And what kind of water pools do they build with these? Ah, you was a tricky one. This kind is too porous for water pools. Very good. And lastly, can you name an outstanding characteristic of Byzantine bricks? These have high calcium. Like what is in your bone. Yes. Most impressive. And here's your bulb. Is your brick. You can't swallow me. This ain't no Byzantine brick. Ah, oh, he scratched me. Stop for the sacred law. Stop the sacred law! Stop absconding the law! The perfect shot! <sighs> Easy lad. This one's a capture. I put the handcuffs on Bob, even as the befuddled worker was offering him apologies for tripping him. The culprit. A wheelbarrow full of bricks. It's no use, even if we could get him to confess. We can't utterly tell what he's saying. But Chief, you gotta get him to confess. He tried to brick us both in. And that's a serious crime, Jimmy. But are we going to jail him for attempted murder, or for the murders? Attempted murder is something that folks around here are still trying to get their heads around. Every election year I get asked how someone can be arrested for a crime they haven't committed yet. It makes a sick kind of sense, Chief. We don't like it, but like a mortician with no lumber, we can't form a case. The police chief looks relieved. Jimmy and I will be sure to hand out tickets to people at his next rally. We don't want him held for the attempted murders, but what about for the actual murders? Now you're talking, but the problem is he won't budge. He's too smart for our officers. I sent in three interrogators and they've all come out talking about bricks. Since Jimmy and I brought him in, why not give us a try? Like a man without a dog, you have nothing to lose. I don't like it. The two of you are jokers, and the decks are all wild. Come on, Chief. I've been practicing my mean face. You have nothing to lose, Chief. Either he stonewalls us and goes free, or we build a case, brick by brick. I don't like it, but you did bring him in, so maybe it's at least fair that you get to chat with him. And he did try to kill you, so there's that also. I'm going to allow it, but you have one hour. Like the first Highlanders baseball game, we will either win it or lose. One hour. Now get out of my sight. We have our chance, lad. Interrogations are rough things. I need you to trust me completely. Yes, sir. Let me at him. That a boy. I need you to get something for me. Get your bricks cleaned. 
Get your bricks clean at Brick Cleaners, Inc. Have dirty bricks? Just come and see us. We clean all bricks, but no chimneys. Get your bricks cleaned at Brick Cleaners, Inc. And by Need a new look to set you apart from the crowd? At Down Under Clothing, we take exotic animals and skin them to bring you the finest fur clothing. Need some ostrich slippers? Come down to Down Under Clothing for all your exotic clothing needs. Bobcat Bob sits up straight, and a curved smile comes onto his face as he sees Jimmy and I walk in. He looks like he is enjoying this saucer of milk. Well, if it ain't the great detectives I bricked up in the wall. I certainly was surprised to see the likes of you out free. Ah! 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 Die! Die! Jimmy, you can't beat a prisoner. There are too many witnesses. Remember the plan. Jimmy, is it? Well, you are a right rotten one. Should be you wearing these cuffs instead of me. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. You coppers ain't got nothing that'll leave me talking. I dealt with tougher runs in than this sad lot. Did you catch that, Jimmy? Is he making fun of us? I'm not sure. I is making fun of yours. Well, that's very impolite. I'm starting to not like you, Bobcat Bob. First you start killing people, and now you're just being rude. What you gonna do about it, boy? Ain't nothing you can say break me. He's right, Jimmy. He's too good for us. He will just outsmart us. No, sir. We are on the side of justice. We have to be able to make him confess. Ha! Justice is just a relative term that the government gives you for when they're doing people's dirty. I's a victim. He's right, Jimmy. He has us cornered. Like a bobcat corners a small rodent. We have nothing to bargain with. Except... Do you recognize this one, Bob? Just a few minutes ago, he was at your house playing cards with his friends. What? What are you doing? I don't know him. I'm certainly glad of that. Because Jimmy here is as fanatical about taking bricks apart as you are about putting them together. Ooh, this chisel is so sharp. Do you still not know him, Bob? I ain't never seen him before. That's good. Jimmy, why don't we put him on a small weight loss diet? Just to slim him up some. He ain't gonna say nothing anyways. He's a real cool dodger. That's good, but we aren't worried about that. We are just doing this part for fun. Give it a good whack, Jimmy. Let's see that particulate fly. You chipped his corner! We're gonna bring all your friends in here and take them apart, piece by piece. Come over here. Get a good taste. Ah, stop! Stop! He ain't done nothing to you. Tell us the truth, Bob, or Jimmy here will carve your friend up. Like a Thanksgiving turkey that no one enjoys. Enough! I've done it! I've done it! I killed the man out walking because he kicked a brick in the road. Then I done the lady. We helped patch her house and she said she didn't like the bricks I used. So I waited next morning on top of the store. I've done them both! And I would do it again! We heard it all, sir. I believe we can leave now, Jimmy. It's okay, Jimmy. Like using cat gut for stitching. You really pulled through. But... The bricks, sir... <laughs> Are we even the good guys anymore? It was just a brick, Jimmy. The intrepid duo has done it again. No crime is safe and there's no safe place for crime. Join us next time for more of the case files of the Dust Bowl Detective Agency.